Drake Batherson or Dylan Gambrell? Is, uh, are they game time decisions or are they out tonight? Um, game time, but uh, questionable at this point, or doubtful, I would say, sorry. <clears throat> um, we'll see how they are this afternoon, both non-COVID illnesses. Um, and Stutzel uh, pushed it out there today, but uh, he's a game time decision as well. It may not play. Is there a possibility of having to make a call up for two to fill the spots? or? Well, yeah, obviously we'll see this afternoon, and Pierre will make that call. Uh, on, you know, depending on our health, obviously we'll need to bring somebody up. How difficult, DJ, is it to prepare for the game in that sense when you've got three guys who you know, may, may not be in the lineup? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not ideal. Um, we're just looking to try and get healthy, and then, you know, um, if, if those three guys don't play, that's a, it's a, big, you know, it's a big difference. So um, <clears throat> we'll go out there and we'll play hard um, with the guys that we have. Since I got the flu, or is it a... Uh... No, it's from the knee the other day, and, okay. yeah, um, you know, he, uh, he limped to the bus, and then yesterday I seen him in here working on it, and, uh, you know, didn't feel great this morning, so we'll see how he is this afternoon. But if, if there's any chance of, you know, him further hurting himself, then certainly we're not going to risk that, and he won't play. Speaking of which, have you heard, well, I'm sure you got a chance to hear what Brandon Gallagher said about that incident last game, what's your take on what he said? Well, Tim might not play tonight, so it's fairly obvious. Um, you know, I watched him limp to the bus. I watched him take a high stick in the face. So I, I, I mean, it's I respect Gallagher as a player, <clears throat> but uh, we'll just let the refs in the league do their job. And I think, um, you know, the fact that uh, Timmy's as banged up as he, as he is is fairly obvious what happened. Do you worry about the, the reputation that he might have after? Well, I don't. I don't see it. So, <clears throat> reputation's coming from what one guy said. I don't. I don't see that. You comfortable with Victor Mete? I know you don't like guys sitting for a long time. If Victor gets back in, is there a possibility that he plays where he did in the morning skate on, on a wing? Uh, obviously, there is. I mean, this this kind of all these last minute things kind of came out of nowhere. Tim, we were aware of the other two. We weren't till um, you know middle of the night last night or what have you. So. Um, if you ask to play there, I mean, you look fine this morning, but we'll see, you know, we'll talk to Pierre and see, um, you know, what the rules are for, you know, call-ups, you know, emergency call and, and all these things. So, um, but if he has to play, you know, he, he's a smart enough kid, he'll figure it out. Do you ask your team to play very similar to how they played 10 days ago in Nashville? Yeah, for sure. I mean, the biggest thing that we're doing um, right now is, is limiting the odd man rushes. Um, our special teams have been good. Um, you know, certainly our power plays kept us in games <clears throat> and our goaltending. I mean, the, you go as your goalie goes in this league a lot of times, and the goaltending's been real good. So, um, you know, their goalie was the difference in that game. <clears throat> um, and l let's hope that's not the case tonight. And let's create something, um, you know, and, and continue to work as hard as we are. Speaking of goaltending, Anton Forsberg tonight? Yeah. What's, how hard has it been to decide who's going to be starting tonight? Well, <clears throat> at this point, with a guy like Sogi here, you want to put him in the best spots, you know, um, you know, for him to have success. Um, and also you want to allow Forzi the opportunity to keep going because he's played so well. Um, you know, so the, we got some back-to-backs coming up where Sogi will get a look, um, you know, and, uh, and the guys will be ready for him there. But it's more for Sogi to be out here in practice facing these NHL shooters every day. He did a real nice job in Detroit. You know, he's expected to go against Winnipeg here at home, depending on what happens here. Um, so he'll get he'll get some starts, and we'll see how he looks. Uh, DJ, with the return of, well, possibly return of uh, Mark Wojciechowski tonight. Looking back on the, the year that you had with him, what type of impact um, did he have on the ice for you? And then also, was the kind of impact off the ice was you know kind of a role model for the guys, and especially in the community as well? Well, the one <clears throat> one thing about Boral, he practices as hard as he plays. Um, he's a man. Um, you know, when, when I came here, a lot of these guys were boys or, or, or you know, f their first year or second year. And Boros, you know, a mature guy that, that trains, does everything hard, um, is respectful to everyone. So I think that obviously rubbed off, you know, on our guys. And I, I couldn't be happier for a guy. He's having success there. They like him. He's played well. Um, and I think every uh, person in Ottawa knows Boros, 
you know, he'll be back here when his career's over. But I think they know when he put the jersey on, he, he plays for keeps every night. And uh, <clears throat> that's something I'm sure the guys that played with him, that, that you know, took with him. One of the easier guys to cheer for that you've been around? Yeah, for sure. I mean, any coach wants a guy that gives it his all every single day, whether it's in the gym, you know, after games. He's, he trains as hard as anyone would train on an off day, you know, and that's why he's able to keep playing. Um, you know, because of the shape that he's in. And he's found a, a good home in, in Nashville, and it's a good fit for him. And, and I couldn't be happier for him and his wife and his family. Do you have an update on the health of Sean McElroy? Uh, he continues to skate, get some shots, but there's nothing, there's no timetable or, or nothing that's pointing to that he'll play anytime soon at, at this point that I've been told. You've got some momentum going here, I guess, since the trade deadline. Is there, how do you compare it to last year? Similar late season run. Are there similarities? Well, I, like I said before the deadline, there was a lot of pressure and a lot of stress on a lot of people, and we just needed to know who was going to be here, and then kind of form some some lines and 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 you know get some rhythm going, which we got going. Unfortunate today, if we end up with three guys out, that takes us out of rhythm a little bit. But but we've played well. You know, guys have stayed with the same partners. The lines have been the same the most part, except for Batherson going down with Timmy, but. He's played with him before. Everyone knows they're here the rest of the year. And I think that speaks volumes to the mentality and the mental health of, of, of players. Um, when you feel good and you know you're here and you know you're liked, you know, you play your best. And I think that's the case since the deadline is guys know they're not leaving. They're not going up and down. You know, you, you can't be sent down unless you're papered down. So, um, you know, and, and guys know it's the last push, especially for guys that are UFAs. Um, you know, and then the guys that are here are trying to, you know, finish hard for their own respect. So, um, you know, I, I don't know if it's the same as last year because, you know, we had Pinto. If, you know, if, if Sanderson were to play, it gives you a little bit of that. Um, but we are playing hard, you know, for whatever amount of games left, we're going to play right to the buzzer. I just think just one the 12, like the stresses of a team that's like Winnipeg last night or something and... I mean, are you looser, maybe? Than for sure, for sure, you have to be, <clears throat> and, and that's why you see that a lot at the end of the year. There's no stress, you know. You're just playing the games and, and you're having fun, and and that's the thing you have to master in October and no, in November and December. You just got to keep playing. There's 82 games. You know, sometimes you put so much stress on yourself to win one game. You know, if you've lost one or if you lost two, and you start putting stress on yourself, it, it starts to snowball. And I think the best thing in this league is just turn the page, whether you win or lose. You go back and you just have that same recipe to do it over and over and over, and I think that's what the best teams do. Win or lose, they just go again. And since he's joined the team, Matthew Joseph looks like he's just fit in so well. How, how has he been able to do that so quickly? Well, I think much like what I said about the mental side of it, he, he's really good friends with Thomas Shabbat. Played junior with him. They've kept in touch. He's living at his house. So Shabby being such a big part of our dressing room integrates him right away and he feels a part of the team. So that feeling out process isn't quite as tough on a guy like that when you're, you know, you know, best friends are really good friends with one of the key guys in that room, you know. So, and then he's just got that personality, though. I mean, he's always talking. He's jumping around. He's, he's been great energy for, for us and for me um, on the bench. You know, he's been around winners. He understands how to do it. Um, but but he's just good energy and emotion every day, you know, even in practice. He, he's just a fun guy to be around, and, and uh, dressing rooms need that. Have you had any discussion there all that Sanderson is better for him to play a game or two in the NHL? Or if Bell will qualify for Bell, could he go down there? Well, that, that's, that's Pierre's call. I don't, you know, decide who comes up down and what, and what happens there. But obviously, we'd like to get him in, in an NHL game. We think he's an NHL player. Um, <clears throat> but again, if he's unable due to health, we're not going to put him in that risk. But much like Pinto a year ago, if you can get him in some games, if you can get healthy enough, they get to see how hard the league is and how big and how strong. And I think it motivates him to train a little harder in the summer, you know, to go in there and say, wow, this is a level I haven't seen. You know, college hockey's good. Junior hockey's good. It's a long way from the NHL. And when you get out there against – you know, the best players in the league, and it's every night, night after night, you realize how hard it is, and it'd be great for him, even even experience two or three games. Um, but again, it'll it'll depend on his health. You, uh, last time you played them, Saros put on like, the show, is that you have to do a better job against him tonight, I guess, or? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, he's, he's a lot of nights he puts on a show. I think, he, you know, he stopped, what, he stopped 49 the other day, 48 the other day, um, and they win. You got to get in front of him. 
That's for sure. You can't let him see pucks. It's obvious. It's fairly obvious that his hockey IQ is elite, um, and he reads plays, and he's a step ahead of you. Um, so you're going to have to take his eyes away. And if if you can't take his eyes away and he sees it, it's going to be tough to beat him.